Hey everybody, with Hummingbird's release of Mega Live, they really have reset the bar in live imaging sonar. The first thing you'll notice is the image clarity, the edge to edge clarity. There's no heavy segmentation, ghosting, coning, or dead spots. It really is amazing how clear this water column is, but it's actually what we would expect from Mega Imaging. Whether it's Mega DI, Mega SI, Mega 360 imaging, it's no different with Mega Live. The other difference is the simplicity. Basically, you have your transducer and then your power and your Ethernet cable coming from it. That's it. That's all. There's no extra hubs or modules. So it is very much a simple system. When it comes to detail, it actually exceeded my expectations. On a recent trip, we were fishing for walleye, and you can actually make out the dorsal fin, the second dorsal fin, the, the tail, and even in one image, when a walleye was taking a swipe at the bait, you can actually see its mouth open. In deeper water, we can track our baits, and you can also track the swivels above the baits too. So, like I said, exceeded my expectations. When it comes to detail, image clarity, and the simplicity of the system, Mega Live really has something to offer. There we go, any questions? We're done. That's it. See, that's how I roll. <laughs> All right. How's everybody doing? Awesome. Well, I tell you, I've been looking forward to this trip for a long time. Thanks very much, everybody, for coming. Um, like I said, I mean, it's been a couple of years. This is literally the first, you know, live presentation, you know, since the last couple of years. So this is definitely a treat. And, uh, you know, I figured it's an opportunity. Let's talk about one of the new technologies, Mega Live, right? A lot of people have been asking about what is Mega Live about, what's the differences, and there certainly are some differences when we talk about Hummingbird Mega Live Imaging Sonar. We'll talk about some of the features, the differences, uh, the simplicity, clarity, detail, things like that. It's going to be relatively short, but then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up to a bunch of questions. Like I said, it's been a couple of years since we've been able to have, you know, this live type of venue. So any questions that you have on any of the Hummingbird Minn Kota products, right? So definitely your opportunity to chat about it. Um, Mega Live Imaging Sonar, when you look at all the different technologies, I mean, let's face it, mapping, right? 2D sonar, our dual spectrum chirp, right? Big difference with that when you look at chirp sonar. Down imaging sonar, not just down imaging, but mega down imaging, mega side imaging, mega 360, and then of course mega live. Each one of them has their place. So it's not as if mega live is necessarily the end all, but again, it's another one of those tools. You know, one of the analogies where uh, you know, people think, I mean, do you really need 2D sonar? Well, of course you do. Think about it. I mean, I kind of see 2D sonar as like your jigging rod, right? Are you ever going to give up your jigging rod? Heck no, right? Um, side imaging sonar searching right you want to cover water you want to get a lay of the land you know seeing transitions different types of uh uh you know bottom composition obviously for finding fish mega imaging is awesome in terms of the detail that you can see i kind of relate that to you know when you're running blades right each one of them has their own place right so down imaging side imaging 360 imaging i love 360 imaging it's something that's you know, people say, hey, is there anyone that you can live without? I tell you, Mega360 imaging, to have that lay of the land perspective, right? When I'm fishing at the front of the boat, side imaging sonar, of course, you have to be moving, right? With Mega360, you don't actually have to be moving. I could be parked on a spot. I could be sitting off a rock pile. I can see, okay, 2 o'clock, 60 feet, there's some fish hanging off of it, and I can see exactly where I have to pitch. So you don't actually have to be moving with Mega360. I've used it a lot ice fishing back home when we are fishing Lake Winnipeg. I mean, it's just such a vast body of water. Where do you start? Well, imagine if you can actually drop the transducer down with Mega 360 imaging, and at a glance, as soon as that screen refreshes, you can see, is there fish here or not? And I mean, it's as simple as that, because you can actually see, not only if there's big pods of fish there, but the relative size. Is there bait, a big fish, small fish, whatever the case is, at a glance, you can see if you actually want to drill holes there, because of the coverage that it has. And I know some folks that guide out there that are using Mega 360 imaging, and again, it is such an important tool for them to be able to, you know, find fish. Um, with live imaging sonar, there are so many benefits to live, live imaging sonar. 
um, especially when you're fishing offshore structures, right? You can scan the areas, you can scan directly below the boat, right? But you can actually be parked on a spot and you can actually scan around and see if those fish are suspended higher up in the water column, lower in the water column. Again, it cuts back in that search time. Any of you that have actually used it for, um, for ice fishing as well, you can drill your holes, you can run a series of holes right beside, and you can see all three, four year lines, you know, depending on how many people and how many rods out you have. It's an amazing tool. Again, it's not the end all, but it's another one of those tools that you can have. So let's talk about the difference. When Hummingbird came out with mega live imaging sonar, it wasn't just for the sake of doing so, right? There are certainly other options out there, but what is different, you know, with Hummingbird mega live imaging? It has to do with the simplicity of the system, the detail, the edge to edge clarity, right? Simplicity is one of the most important things too. And I'll tell you about that because there is a big difference in terms of the overall design, but you can see how the transducer is in the different profiles from your down, your forward, and of course, your landscape modes. But let's look at the actual mega live imaging transducer itself. We've actually got one mounted right here and this is it, right? With other systems out there that might use an additional module or a black box, this is one of the most notable things with Hummingbird mega live imaging is, is that's it. There's the transducer. You have an ethernet cable, which is your transducer cable. And then you have your power cable. That's it. There's nothing else. There's no additional black box or anything related to it. It's a very, very simple system between the wires that you have that connects to your sonar unit and that's it. Very, very simple. Look at the adjustment. When you have it on your down mode here, you can see that instead of having extra, you know, adapters and, and you know, if you got to kind of have it one way and leave it like that. The nice thing about this is that you can actually make your adjustment here in forward mode done. That's it. What if you want to put it in a landscape mode? Well, you can see there's actually these buttons. If I can reach them right here. There you go. Let's actually put this in landscape mode. I tilt it over. There you go. Now it's in landscape mode. So very, very quick adjustment from landscape to forward and to down mode. That's it. There's no extra brackets or anything that you need. So it's a very, very simple system. The other nice thing about it is when we first released Mega Live Imaging Sonar, I mean, right out of the box, it was awesome. In fact, I think, uh, I mean, I was out with, uh, you know, Greg and Lane and we we're on, on Pasquale Lake and that was actually my very first time using it. So when I came out here and when we were trying it out on the lake, that was the first time that I actually got a chance to see it live on the water itself. And it definitely exceeded all of our expectations. What I wanted to show you here is, this is the first thing. These are actual screenshots from that trip. First thing that you notice is look at the clarity, right? You don't have any sort of heavy segmentation or coning or, you know, sort of gaps in the sonar beam. Cause that's something that you may notice with some systems is that when the fish kind of swims in and out of, you know, the segmentations or the separations of the beam, it's kind of stronger and weaker and stronger and weaker. And you can even notice variances in the bottom where you kind of have a faded bottom and a stronger bottom, right? It's consistent all the way across the board, edge to edge clarity. That was one of the most notable things, you know, that we saw when we turned it on is the clarity. And that's certainly what Hummingbird's known for. So that edge to edge clarity was actually really amazing to see. And you can see right here, there's definitely some fish down there. In fact, in this picture, you can actually see somewhat of a profile of the tail, the dorsal fin. I'll show you some other cool images as well. All right. This is actually on the Red River. Um, very dirty water, right? Um, very clear screen. The settings that I have, whether when I was doing demos and, you know, back home, you know, uh, showing people on the river to whether I was out on Lake of the Woods or some of the other clear lakes, it didn't matter. I didn't have to adjust my settings all that much. Typically, wherever I had my sensitivity and my contrast set, I didn't have to mess around with it from one body of the water to the next couple little tweaks and that's it. But this is actually a screenshot here and there was a big school of fish right there, right behind the structure. Here's another example right here. Right? So you can see, look at the range and you can actually see again, the red river, there's the bridge structure right there. Very, very clear. Again, you don't have that segmentation. Um, that was a pretty cool thing to see. What about detail? I mean, is it capable of showing good detail? Absolutely. This was actually taken from a still, you know, from one of the videos that we had when we were capturing some content and you can actually see when I froze the frame, cause we were dropping the lure down, right? And then when I froze it, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. You can actually see the tail. You can see the second dorsal, the dorsal, and check that out. You know, when the bait drops there, you can see how the fish was actually taking a swipe at the lure. I mean, if it's capable of that kind of detail, I mean, I don't know what else you're looking for, right? Amazing detail. 
here's another shot right here, right? There's a dorsal fin. This is a walleye right here. And in fact, you can tell the difference in the profiles of the fish. They weren't just these blobs that were swimming below the boat. So as the carp were moving in, you can definitely tell the difference between the profile of those fish and in other bodies of water, smallmouth bass, walleye, and so on. I can actually tell the difference of those fish just by the profile. And here's a cool shot. I mean, there's that classic walleye picture right there, right? Check this out. Look at that. You know, it's, it, it's carbon copy. So really, really cool stuff in terms of detail. So it's definitely capable of that. The different modes, as I mentioned, down mode, forward mode, landscape mode. One of the things to keep in mind, um, and I've certainly had some folks ask about this when it comes to ice fishing, is that the beam profile, here's, I'll just leave it in this down, maybe I can show in the screen here, okay? If this is the inside, this is where it's gonna mount on the pole, or if you run in an Altrex on the trolling motor itself, the inside where the pole section is, is the angle of the beam. It's a little bit more of a flatter angle, right? And then it kind of goes out like that. So you can imagine some folks were saying, well, when I'm fishing a little bit deeper water, I would start to lose my lure. Well, what would actually happen is, is that if you can imagine, if we're talking a bit of a straighter angle where that beam goes down and then it kind of goes out to the side, if your pole, if you're fishing on the inside or behind the pole, and, you're, and the pole's off just by a few degrees, what's gonna happen is, is that whatever the depth is, it could happen at 20 feet, it can happen at 30 feet, it could happen at 40 feet, your lure is eventually gonna fall on the outside of the beam. So that's one thing to keep in mind, is that when you're using this, you wanna make sure that the orientation is proper. So obviously if you're using it in the down mode, you wanna make sure that if you're fishing on the right side of where the transducer is, that your lure is actually showing on the right side of the screen, not the left side, because if it shows on the other side, it's reversed, right? So those are some of the things that you might pick up. And you'll wanna make sure in the settings that you actually do set up the orientation properly. The reason why I mentioned that beam profile is because when I'm drilling my hole and I'm actually fishing sort of in front of the transducer, what would happen is, is if I was pointing the other way and I'm behind the transducer, especially if the pole angle's off a little bit, you could run into that situation where your lure does fall out of that beam. Now this is certainly capable of picking up your lure and obviously the bottom in pretty darn deep water. We've had a software update recently that added even more enhancements and performance. And from some of the folks that I talked to uh, that were using it in deeper water, what about lake trout fishing, right? You know, one of the guys was fishing in, uh, in 70 feet of water, not a problem. He can track his lure all the way down in 70 feet. He could see fish on the bottom swimming, you know, and that's definitely been one of the nice things about having a software update when you look at this system, again, there's no black box or external module, is it's just a software update, right? To be able to put a lot of those features and enhancement. And surely, you know, we'll see additional, you know, like with the Hummingbird head units, we're gonna see additional updates and different things like that down the road. So that's one of the cool things with this type of design. When you do a software update, you would plug it into your sonar head unit and that would actually send the update into here. So again, it's not just a transducer. There's some you know, componentry and chips and stuff that are going on in here, right? Because you're actually sending the update to the transducer itself. Settings, this is a starting point. I will say that when I first started using Mega Live Imaging, my settings were quite a bit different than this. In fact, what I found is that if I only used as much sensitivity as I needed just to be able to track the lure, that was my baseline. And then what I did to have a clear image, like a lot of those pictures that you saw, is I would increase my contrast. What would happen is that if you had the contrast way too low, you would start getting that kind of, um, not clutter, but um, uh, the, the screen would start to blow out, right? Where you kind of have that fading and you know, um, you know, noise that's in the water. So by bringing your, your contrast up, it would get rid of all of that. Okay, especially with the software update and some of the tweaks that they've done. This is actually a starting point. And this information is actually on the Hummingbird website. So what they recommend is start at your, seven, your sensitivity at 15. Again, this is not carbon stone. This is where you're gonna start it at. Start it at 15, move your contrast down to one, set your dynamic contrast down to one. The first thing you're gonna notice when you deploy it and you see it in the water is it's gonna be probably way too overexposed, too much sensitivity, and it's gonna be blowing out a little bit. Okay, so in order to clean up the screen, you literally only have to move your contrast up just a few notches because all that stuff that you see in the water column, you're gonna notice by adjusting your sensitivity and, or sorry, your contrast and raising it up just a little bit, all that clutter in the water column, it's just gonna start disappearing, right? Very, very easy to adjust. So you're using your sensitivity right there as your baseline, 
like I said, relative to your depth, your size lure, that's a good starting point. And they're not saying use exactly those settings, but it's a really good starting point, right? The other thing to note is that our current software version is 1.150. The likelihood is that if you've already got Mega Live Imaging and you have not done a software update, or even some of the ones that are on the shelves, they might not have come with that software update, definitely recommend that you do it. Again, notice, you know, certainly a difference. In fact, talk to Clayton over here um, because uh, he's used it from the two different versions and he can certainly attest to the improvements and the differences with the, uh, the updated software. And again, it's one of those things with the software update where you are getting those enhanced features and tell you, well, I mean, what does a software update cost? Nothing, right? To get that type of uh, performance improvement. So that's it. There you go. Mega live imaging. Um, detail edge to edge clarity, and of course, the simplicity of the design. Um, anybody here, have, has anyone here actually used it so far? Or? Yeah. yeah, a few of you, yeah. What did you find about it? It's, it's Pretty amazing, eh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everything what you're saying, it's, you can see fish coming in, you can see them pissing around the lure. All Absolutely. Things. I like the idea of adjusting contrast, I didn't do that. Right. That, that definitely is gonna be something like Yeah, good. and that's a good point, because again, adjust, it's, it really is a matter, because there's not a lot of stuff that you have to do to mess around with your settings, right? It really is a matter of balancing your sensitivity and your contrast. I did find that by bringing my contrast up, you do get that, in other words, to get, you know, some of the images, I'll just go back on a couple of these slides here, but to get the type of clarity, you know, that you see in these images, it's not hard to do. And pretty much just by turning it on, that's what I got. When you are fishing deeper water, smaller lures, I mean, one of the first ice trips of the year that I was doing, we were fishing 35-ish or so feet of water. I mean, not terribly deep, um, you know, as far as, you know, sonar standards go. Um, but I was using just a tiny little tungsten jig, and I can track that thing all the way down, you know. One of the other things that you'll notice for anyone that's used live imaging sonar is the ability to see how the fish are reacting to your lure, right? That's one of the most important things that I found is that, especially if you've got, you know, really active fish, if you've got negative fish, um, the thing that I found that was really cool on Lake Winnipeg, I remember one trip that we did where I, I you know, the amount of times that you see these fish like that close from your lure and just sitting there looking at it. In fact, I remember one time and we were fishing pretty shallow, these big walleye were coming in, you know, uh, that day I think we caught upwards of, let's say, 27 and a half inches, but you could see them come in, and then as you're trying, you know, you do the trick where you kind of, you know, give your lure a shake and you try to raise it up because you want to get them to commit to it, right? As soon as you start bringing them off the bottom and they start following, eventually they're either going to hit it or they're going to go away. So when you start doing that, one of the things that I noticed is these walleye, they would just go like this. It was the coolest thing to see on the screen, and it was almost like, you see those pictures of, you know, the whales in the water and they're just kind of standing upright? That's what these walleye were doing. So, you know, my rattle bait or spoon was just, you know, right above them. And they went like this and they were literally just straight vertical. Because it's nothing for them to all of a sudden decide, because the lure's right here. A flick of a tail or not even that, all they got to do is just go, you know, just suck it in and that's it. That's why a lot of times you're not always going to get a hard thump. You might just be jigging it or you might just all of a sudden, oh, you got some weight there because they didn't do anything. All they did is they just sucked in the water and now all of a sudden their bait's in their mouth. There's no, you know, you know, they didn't hammer the bait. They didn't hit it aggressively. They just did that and that's it. Now there's just weight on the lure. So it really gives you an idea of how are they responding to your lure, right? Do they want more action? Do they want something a little bit more subtle? What about those times where they're not going to, they don't want anything. You know, maybe you're going to call them in, right? We do that a lot with rattle baits, right? You're going to call them in, but then all of a sudden you see them swim away from your lure, then all of a sudden your dead stick just goes boom, just like that, right? So it's really neat because they can tell you what they want just by seeing how they respond to your lure, so. You need giant reader on this, right? Yes, that's a good point. Really what the, what the cutoff is, so all Solix, regardless of the generation, I'm still running Solix generation ones, not a problem. And in fact, it's obviously a, a direct plug-in with the Ethernet cable. So the Solix and the Apex, Helix, G3N and G4N, any of the models with Mega Imaging Plus, okay? Um, it has to be a Mega Plus unit in order for it to be compatible. So some of the newer units, obviously, that have Mega Plus, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I, so you could use this actually down to, I'm pretty sure it's actually down to a Helix 7 uh, G4N because the new Helix 7 G4Ns actually have Mega Plus. 
right? So that's actually pretty cool that it actually does bring it down into that screen size. So from a value perspective, you know, from a, a seven, you know, G4N, again, it has to be a mega imaging plus unit, the eight, nine, 10, 12, 15, and so on. Yeah. Um, you'll also want to make sure that you have the latest software update as with anything. I know some people every once in a while you get a little bit hesitant, you know, sometimes with my iPhone, it's like, well, do I want to do the software update? Because no, I've never really had any issues as it relates to software updates. A lot of the features and benefits and performance enhancements that they have with software updates, there was actually so much more stuff that happens, you know, that's not even listed like behind the scenes, right? Um, so I always recommend make sure your unit has a latest software update. One of the ways that you can do it is when you go into your menu setting on your Humminbird unit and then you go into your views, you notice where it says, you know, GPS diagnostic, system status, accessory test, all that sort of stuff. So when you go to your accessory test and your system status, it'll actually show whether you're mega live, all the other accessories that you have are connected. It'll show you the serial number and it'll show you the software version, you know, that your mega live actually is. If you're running one point one four five zero you're definitely going to want to do that software update to get the latest 1.150 what's that you absolutely and that's the same thing that's the same thing with helix as long as they are here's the reason why i mentioned that is you know that with some of the um um screen sharing. So for example, if you have a Helix, let's say a Sonar GPS combo and you're running Mega DI or Mega SI at the console and maybe you have a Sonar GPS combo at the bow, through your networking it will share that Mega DI and Mega SI to a non-imaging unit at the front as, as long as it's a compatible unit. The difference with Mega Live is you do ha you still have to have across the board whatever screens you're going to network to, you still have to have a Mega Imaging Plus unit. So you can't do it with a non-Mega Imaging Plus. It has to be like an MDI Plus or an MSI Plus. So if you've got three other Mega you know, Imaging Plus units, obviously the way that you would do it as far as Ethernet goes, if you have just one unit, you connect it you know, directly into that unit. If you're going to be networking your units, of course, that also brings into iPilot Link. And if you have two head units or maybe three head units, the way that you would do it is you would get the Ethernet box, the Ethernet hub, right, the five station Ethernet port. You would plug your mega live imaging into it. And then, of course, screen number one, screen number two, screen number three, um, iPilot link. Eventually, if you do run into a situation where it's like, OK, well, I've got another Ethernet connection here that I would like to have networked. Well, you can actually take a second Ethernet hub. And then what you do is just get a smaller Ethernet cable and you could actually jump, you know, port number five to port number one. And you're basically linking them together. And now you got, you know, more Ethernet ports. So that's the way you can do it. Whatever screens are compatible with Mega Live, you will have that view. So the person at the front of the boat can see it just as a person at the back of the boat or whatever screens that you're going to network it with for sure. But it does have to be a Mega Plus unit. No, not at all. No. And in fact, you can get your depth. So within, for example, if you're using a price fishing and you're still using your conventional, uh, like your, your uh, XI uh, 1521, your 91521 transducer, um, you're going to get depth with or without that transducer, right? So even if you're just using the Mega Live imaging transducer, you will still get a depth source from that. Yeah, and it doesn't matter what angle. Like for while in the down mode, you can see that you're, I mean, it, you, there you go, 13, you know, it's relative, to, there's your center point. So you can kind of see, yeah, there's 12 at that line, 13. You're pretty much right bang on to, you know, that depth there. Well, so the, yeah, the forward mode is going to be relative to that angle, right? So you're not, it's not like you're scanning 60 feet forward and you know you're in 10 feet of water and it's saying 60 feet. No, your depth is from that, that downward source. But typically, if you're going to be using it in the forward mode as well, especially as we talk about open water, you know, you're likely also going to have your 2D transducer in there as well that's going to give it that depth source. I kind of find that, especially if you're searching, you know, for ice fishing, I mean, I like to have it in the forward mode. Most people for ice fishing anyway, that down mode is kind of a cool mode to have because again, you could be in your shelter and like I said, you can drill your hole and you can have a few holes right beside you and you can see all those lines all the way out to whatever relative range that you have it set to. When I'm fishing in open water, literally 99% of the time, I'm using it in the forward mode. 
I happen to use mine on the Altrex, so whatever position I have that foot pedal in, I mean, all I gotta do, and this is the great thing with live imaging sonar, is that ability to scan into a structure or to scan into a shoreline so you can see those fish as you're approaching it, how they're relating to it. If there's any fish there, are they starting to rise up? Are they getting spooked? Are they, you know, it's like I said, it's, it, it's a very amazing tool, you know, to be able to use. But I still use my 2D sonar. I still use my side imaging. I love 360. So, anywho, I said I talked for 15 minutes. Sorry, guys, I lied. You know that. You know that'll never happen when I'm doing a seminar. So, well, anyway, make everybody come yeah. out. Let's give him a hand. Yeah. He's, you know, make trip to Winnipeg. He's got to get home to Winnipeg because of the storm. beautiful weather. Try to beat the storm here. home. So, but yeah, yeah. Uh, any other questions on it? We'll uh, throughout the weekend. I've got a chance to use this thing. I mean, we've been in business for. 37 years and when I got to use it this summer it was really cool it, it was like I see all kinds of stuff and, yeah okay when I saw this and played with it yeah yeah you had a smile on your face and when, when you I saw, saw it was the very it. same time I as I saw it, it. So, yeah. <laughs> that it was cool like it yeah. is cool yeah I, I, yeah great you got a smile of course yeah this, yeah, this of course. gave him a big smile thanks yeah. everybody thanks everybody appreciate it yeah.